welcome. <laughs> sorry, we are welcoming you in coronavirus conditions. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry. <laughs>
is making it. Well, good evening. My name is Tatul Hakopian. I'm a reporter with CivilNet. Uh, thank you, uh, AGPU. Uh, thank you, Dalar. Thank you, all of you. And thank you, our guest, uh, Adriana Isern, board member of the Catalan National Assembly, it's an NGO. And uh, Adriana, today, we will talk on Catalonia and the right to self-determination in the 21st century. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I will uh, ask you to present your organization, uh, Catalan National Assembly, please. Thank you for inviting me, Tatul. Uh, well, my organization is a social society organization, so it was created uh, because of the independentist movement and it's a very big organization in Catalonia that has more than uh, 50,000 members and uh, so we are, I am a representative of all these members that have voted me in order to, to work in, in the field of international affairs. So you said fifty five zero fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, fifty thousand. It's an NGO. It's an NGO. Yeah. It's an association, yeah. and um, well, it works. The objective of the ANC Assemblea is to to fight for independence of Catalonia, uh, in within the, the social organization. So from from the bottom to up, okay. Uh, because we believe that it's it's a transversal movement. So we believe that it has to be something that comes from bottom to up, and and it began uh, six years ago uh, because of uh, the situation in Catalonia that it was um, after 30 years of uh, democracy after the dictator Franco that uh, he was not substitute, he was dead so it's different from other countries that, that they have fought the dictatorship here it was only dead <laughs> uh, we have tried to be in Spain so we have tried to, to find our space in within the Spanish state, uh, trying to, fire, to have our autonomy as a, as a community, as a nation, because we believe ourselves we're a nation, and uh, it was impossible. Um, when I say it was impossible, it's because um, we have a state that is against us, so it doesn't work for our citizen value, our citizen life. So. Uh, because of different, I'm not going to explain now all the history of the, uh, of the independentist movement, but uh, because of different reasons of stopping all our progress in Catalonia, uh, stopping our laws, stopping uh, to that we could learn Catalan in schools, um, we decided to create this organization. And uh, since then we have been organizing all the, all the fight in streets always non-violent fight, that's important to, to explain. And so it's always fighting on streets and protesting for our, uh, a new status, a new, a new way of living that it's better for all of us. Yeah. What's your relationship with the organization, with, uh, with the government of Mr. Puigdemont? You are the supporters of the, the, the government or? No, well, uh, of course we, we support uh, our government in the situation they are now. But uh, we don't have nothing to do. So one thing is the institution, and the other thing is the social organization. Uh, the, we support all independentist parties. That means the ones that are in the government and the ones that they are not. So um, Puigdemont, well, now Puigdemont, it's, it's not our president, the former president. Now yeah. it's a Euro, Euro deputy. In exile. Yeah, in exile. Um, but yes, of course, we support us as much as we can the Catalan government as a social society as uh, from the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I, will, I have uh, other questions, but uh, let's invite our audience to ask questions if you have, please. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you very much. My name is David Abgarian. I'm a lawyer myself, and I'm very glad to see you here in Armenia. And honestly, uh, I'm wondering why such kind of uh, uh, such kind of events were not organized in Armenia, because uh, right of self determination is an issue that Armenia is very interested to be promoted. And in this time, actually, Catalonia is one of the main uh, promoters of uh, right of self-determination in Europe and in all, all, of, all of the world. And uh, I am really very glad to, to have this discussion. Honestly, I'm very interested in these issues, and especially Catalonia, because uh, first time I visited Catalonia back in 2001. I really felt in love in, with this country and people, and uh, then I visited many times, uh, have some ties there, and uh, also I love very much visiting, especially on the other national, the Catalonia and 9-11 and a couple of times I was there and see, saw how people protest peacefully and uh, uh, promote their rights. Uh, being a lawyer, I am aware of uh, this principle of self-determination, which, which uh, is obvious for me, but uh, I have some questions mainly related with internal affairs of Catalonia because, and uh, I, I would also mention that uh, your organization, uh, Assemblea Nacional de Catalonia, it was and is one of the main sources of my information because I follow you in uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and I know you have groups in England and USA, etc. So it's, it's tremendous work you are doing. So my question, uh, questions, uh, mainly related with internal issues, not international issues, and I, 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 I would like to hear that from first uh, source. Uh, I know that uh, issue of uh, independence uh, has supporters, many supporters, and majority of society of Catalonia uh, wants it, and uh, as a result, you have a parliament where majority of parties promote independence, despite, despite the fact that these parties are have different ideologies and uh, stand on, on uh, different parts of the political spectrum. I know um, lefts are there, centrists are there, etc. And before these times, uh, I saw that uh, these political parties were united what concerns to independence. But now I know that uh, uh, snap elections to be held in Catalonia, and uh, it's some kind of, there is a, some kind of split between the parties, especially related to the formation of new Spanish government when one of the independent parties supported them and uh, now seems that there is no enough unity. Is it true? And uh, whether is there a unity among the Catalan society and political parties and uh, civil society regarding the uh, independence and uh, what, what, what to expect during the new elections? It's a very good question. <laughs> So, uh, yes, there's big differences mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the new approach of the Spanish state. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, this difference can make us go to elections, it's true, mm -hmm. uh, because there's different ways to arrive to the same point. Yep. Uh, but the social society, it's all together. And that's the important thing, because we are the ones that we are going to vote. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it depends on if we go to new elections in Catalonia. Mm -hmm. It depends what is the um, 
position position of the of the, the, the different independentist parties, mm -hmm. and that the voters are going to vote in one direction or the other. One thing that it's clear is that, um, at, at least from our organization, uh, is that um, there's no a possible solution with Spain, because they don't want to sit and talk. Mm -hmm. So they just say they want to sit only mm -hmm. to to in a a face thing to say, yeah. but in reality, uh, when you sit on the table, that is what Esquerra Republicana is trying to do now, that they want to sit and talk with the Spanish government of Pedro Sánchez, uh, in, the, in the negotiation, there's no any referendum, there's no any, mm, in the agenda of the, mm -hmm. of the meeting, there's no any discussion on the conflict. In, it's always, um, they try to avoid the conflict, the conflict is not there, yeah. and that only creates more independentists, because the conflict is there, so they, they can continue to, don't, don't want to talk, don't want to sit and, and see what is the solution, uh, that, that the conflict is there, so people uh, are not going to stay quiet. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, it's good that Esquerra Republicana shows again mm -hmm. that this situation is like this. Mm -hmm. It's a way of, of uh, demonstrating again that there's no option with Spain to, for a dialogue, for an official referendum. So the unilateral way is the only way. Mm -hmm. That is the opinion of our organization, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. It's not the opinion of all the independentist movement. Mm -hmm. But uh, our organization is a huge organization. It's the, the most important one uh, in regard to the, the fight on streets, on non violent fight. So I would say that um, if there's new elections, the, the people will decide. So uh, what is the direction that uh, Catalonia has to, has to go? And in, in our case, um, there's no uh, option to go uh, with the dialogue with Spain because there's no dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, can I continue? In 2017, in October, when referendum held in, in, in Catalonia, uh, only 43% of the Catalan population took part. Can we say that uh, another part, half part of the Catalan population are against the independence or no? No, we totally cannot say that because uh, it was not an official referendum and it was an official and a referendum done with, uh, with uh, police kicking us. So people were afraid to go to vote and still two million people went to vote. And one, one information that it's very clear is that, for example, the official referendum of Brexit uh, had an official result and an official conclusion with less participation than the one of the referendum in Catalonia. So uh, if we take in consideration that it's official, the Brexit, <laughs> that it was uh, legal, we would say, uh, it was with less participation. So I would say that two million people went to vote the 1 of October. It was, for me, it was an honor as a country because they fight it. It was all women going, people, uh, women pregnant going to vote, kin children, all well, children going in the family, of course, they don't vote. <laughs> but it was really, um, I, we, we always get, uh, we have an emotion of that day because it was a very important day for us because we lost fear to the Spanish state. And it's very difficult to lose fear when you have a big state. That it's a state from history in time, that is an imperialist state, that has always uh, had the, the power of uh, an army, you know? And, and it's so important that people that day, we were all together and we lost fear. So two million people voting, for me, it's more than, than, than important than, than, for example, Brexit, that it was less people voting. So that was the day also when you lost your fear, yeah? I would say yes, yes. Yeah. Still, still um, there's, no, there's no one day and then everything goes well, so I think it's a long pass. And what is important is that we continue fighting. It's not, now it's not, sometimes it's down, sometimes it's up, but the important thing is that, that uh, social society are together, and uh, we have a common view, and also um, I want to point that it's important also uh, apart from the division of political parties of one option or the other, we have uh, one thing that we have created that is very important in the international affair, that it's the uh, Consejo de la República, that it's created, uh, it's like we would say like uh, uh, government in the exile, 
So it mm, puts them on and all the part of the government of Catalonia that, that decided to, to exile. Uh, that, and also inside this Conseil there is different organizations, for example, like uh, left organizations. Uh, so it's not only Puigdemont, it's also different political parties inside there. So it's really a transversal movement outside from Catalonia that help us to, to fight in a different way so for, for independence. And that is really important, mm, for, for example, for last weekend, that it was a very important day also, because now that Puigdemont is a Euro deputy, uh, he can move all around Europe instead, not in Spain, but all in all Europe. And we went to, to south of France, that it's uh, uh, north of Catalonia. Uh, it's a part that we lost on a war, because Catalans, we have lost all the wars. And so so uh, part of Catalan now belongs to, to France. France now. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it was very nice, because he arrived there, he said, I am home. And there was like, a, so there were lots of buses, for example, my mother went there, because it, well, I was here so I couldn't go, my mother was there, and she said she was 12 hours in a bus and she couldn't get to Perpignan, that is the capital of Catalonia North, because there were so many people. So she, she just took 12 hours in a bus, but she was so happy that to see there's so many people still um, having the hope to fight for for our own country. So while you're traveling uh, all over the world, different countries, you say, I am from Catalonia, not I am from Spain, yes? Of course, yes. And why? <laughs> well, because I'm Catalan, it's as easy as it is. What does it mean? What, what you, when you say, I am Catalan, when I say I'm, I'm Armenian, I know my identity, it's my language, my traditions, probably Armenian church, uh, Mount Ararat, probably. Uh, when you say I am Catalan, you think uh, you you feel your language, your history, your church, Catholic Church, please. Well, the Catalan identity it's not ethnicist; it's uh, political, totally political. So it's Catalan who wants to be Catalan. So if now you go to Catalonia and you want to feel yourself Catalan, you you can. So we we don't stop anyone for being Catalan. So, um, of course, it's related also with the language. For us, language is very important uh, because it's our way of understanding the world, the way how we express is the way how we think. So, I would say that language is important, but also there are, for example, people that speak Spanish and they come from, from, from other parts of the Spanish state and they came to Catalonia, well, their parents came to Catalonia and now they, they are Spanish speakers, but they feel independentist, so and they feel Catalan. So, so it has it has not to do with um, with the origin. I would say uh, it's Catalan who lives and works in Catalonia, and and yes, of course, it has to do with the culture. So it's someone that really uh, loves one culture and feels it. I feel it like it's mine, no? For example, I was studying in Germany and I feel a little bit German because of all what I uh, become as being in Germany studying. So I, I, I don't know how to say it, but it's a, it's a feeling, it's an emotional feeling and um, also it's a rational feeling because it's the right of self-determination. So is that you believe that uh, this country has the right to exist as a state and it's, it's a right, so you fight for it. You could be from the other part of the world, but you, you think this is uh, uh, just, it's, it's justice, so you fight for it. So I would say this I is see. the definition. I see. Other questions? Um, is it helpful for Catalonia or your movement to be part of Europe or is, does, is it harmful to you? Very good question also. <laughs> uh, well, uh, being in Europe, it's, it has contradictions. So in one side, sometimes it helps you and in the other one, it doesn't help you at all. So uh, the European Union has very good things and very bad things and I will put an example in order for you to understand. Uh, Spanish state not only represses Catalans, also represses music uh, people, uh, singers, uh, because of their songs. And we have a, a singer from Mallorca uh, that he's living very near to Puigdemont in Brussels. 
and he's in exile also because of his songs. And uh, today, for example, they give in the news that um, the, the Human Rights Court of Europe give him mm, the, his, he said Baltonic, his name is Baltonic, he said that Baltonic was right and the Spanish state was wrong, that he has to be in exile uh, for his songs against the king of Spain. So, so sometimes it's good in these cases because it defends human rights and it gives a, a good uh, shot to Spain. But on the other side, the, the, the democratic system of Europe, I think, it's my, it's my opinion totally, it's feigning a little bit as it had to be before. In the sense that um, the string right is, uh, is growing a lot, so that has an effect on the European Parliament and that has an effect on the European Commission. So, for example, it's happening what we are seeing now in the news, that uh, it defends people like Baltonic for the, the songs he does, but at the same time, it leaves to happen what is happening with the uh, refugees now in the borders in, in Turkey and Greece. So, and leaves people getting dead in the Mediterranean Sea uh, every day. So, um, it's a strange Europe. In one sense, uh, we have lots of tools that we could use them as Europeans to be uh, uh, more, more wealthy and more democratic and more um, happy, I would say. But uh, there's a lot of uh, interest, as in all the countries in the world. So that, that makes um, Europe not as democratic as it should be. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, yeah. no, thank you. Now, the, my question now is about the economics uh, of, of this, uh, of, of whether being part or being on its own. Um, as we know, small countries, it's very difficult to survive on your own. When you're part of a bigger entity, you have much more opportunities to grow and to have a, you know, growing economy, let's say. Um, when you think of, of, of separating yourself from Spain, how do you, how do you think and balance through the economics aspect of, of the Catalonia idea that you have? Well, um, we think that we will be wealthier. Of course, we don't have a magic ball, but uh, our economy is a very stable economy, and um, uh, Spain is stopping us from growing in lots of senses in fiscal senses, in the way we pay taxes, and also in, 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 in investments. So they are stopping lots of things. So for example, for the Mobile World Congress, uh, they are fighting in order that it's not played in Barcelona, it's played in Madrid, and things like that. So, so I would say that, um, of course, if we would not be members of the European Union, if we were be a, a non-state, um, it would be kind of interesting to see what happens. But there's lots of countries in the EU that are not from the European Union and, and they don't have problems at all. So I would say that uh, we are a very uh, open economy. So we have a uh, lot of ex ex export and import. So I would say that we are not uh, 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 scared about that. So it's a thing that we are less scared about. And. Uh Mm, why Catalonia wants to be independent? Because of economy, because of uh, because of Spanish governments uh, did and now do uh, wrongdoings. Why you want uh, to be independent and why you don't want to be part of Europe? Because Europe is uniting. Uh, they are trying to be together, and you Catalonians don't want, and you uh, want to be separate. Uh, from Spain? Well, first, uh, we are one to be together with Europe. So it's not something to be together or not, it's the territorial organization. So I would say the, bo the borders of Europe are changing all the time. So there's lots of European countries that they are only 10 years old, 15 years old. So I like would say. Like Kosovo, like uh, former Yugoslav exactly. republics. Exactly. So. Yeah. So I would say that um, it's not something to do with we feel part of or not of Europe, that I think the most of Catalans feel European, but it's, it's, uh, it's uh, having our own state. So the first reason why we are independent is, is self-determination. We feel ourselves a nation. We are a historic nation. Uh, I would say uh, we were one of the first parliaments in the world, for example. In the world. Yes, yes, it was before the British parliament. And because <coughs> So um, the first reason for all of them that it has 
a lot to do with also with the Armenian cause, is self-determination. We want to be our own state and we have the right to be our own state. So we are a community, we have our language, we have our traditions. We, we want uh, to organize in a state because it's the way nowadays that uh, you can do policies and you can take decisions. So that's why we want to be a state. So I would say the first reason is this, and then there's, of course, economic reasons, because we have a state that goes against our investments, that goes against our growth, and I would say also... So, Catalonia is much more richer than the other part of the Spain, am I right? Yes, you're right, yes. So, but you are you are investing, you are supporting other parts of Spain. Yes, we, we don't have a problem in continuing supporting them, but in a, in a fair way. So, it's not something to do with... Uh, uh, oh, we are egoist and we don't want to share our wealth. It's, it's more that it's a fair distribution of taxes. So if we would be a European member state, uh, we would continue contributing to other parts of Spain in the same way. So it's not, it's not to do of, of sharing. So I would say that first self-determination, second, uh, well, it's not second or first, but an, uh, another reason it's economic. And another reason that I think it's really important is uh, social welfare. So, for example, in Catalonia we have approved uh, more than 20 laws on social policies, and uh, the parliament has approved them, and then they go to, well, the popular party says, oh, this is against the Spanish constitution, and go to the tribunal court, and then uh, the tribunal court stops this law. So, uh, it's, it's putting a... It's, it's stopping our, our, our wealth as citizens. So we have voted some parties that defend some social policies and then when we approve these social policies, they are stopped in Madrid. And we have the, 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 the budget for doing it, but they say it's against the constitution. Okay, if they say it's against the constitution, let's change the constitution. The constitutions are, are, are not uh, the Bible, you know? So, yeah. So it's, 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 I would say that it's for all these reasons. Yeah. So, for, ex for example, in the case of Nagorno-Karabakh, the main issue between Armenians and Azerbaijanis is the status of Nagorno-Karabakh. We Armenians say that Nagorno-Karabakh uh, will never be part of Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijanis say that Nagorno-Karabakh will never be part of Armenia or independent state. Can you explain uh, in this way the case of Catalonia? So are you ready to negotiate lower than independence, but uh, you know, uh, more, than, uh, self uh, more than autonomous? Uh, so the only thing we want to negotiate is self-determination. When you say self-determination, you mean a as, a, as, a, as a separate state, yes, separate totally. independent state. Mm -hmm. Because it's the will of people, so people want that. Uh, I'm not going to go in Spain and say, okay, people want that, but I will, I'm going to accept all the other that you're offering me. So, and they offer nothing. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's a right. So, I, I, I put example, you would say, uh, if you are defending the vote for women, you would go and say, you vote only mm, one election and the other, no, no, you're defending the right to vote for women. So, so it's a right and we, we're going to fight for it uh, as long as we can. So, I would say in the case of, um, of Nagorno-Karabakh, it's the same situation, it's the non-respect of the will of people. If people don't feel Azerbaijani and they feel Armenian, it's their right to self-determinate. So, so there's nothing, mm, there's nothing uh, more clear than that for me. I, I, I think it's very clear. I don't know if it's uh, perhaps not clear for someone that thinks that has to impose a nation to the other. So that's what Spain says, that you have to be Spanish because I want you to be Spanish, but you are never going to make me Spanish. Because, I see. because it's not something you can impose. So, <laughs> so um, the conflict will keep on going. You cannot stop it. So, another uh, question. The football matches between Real Madrid and Barcelona is like a political game, yeah, also? Well, I would say, uh, yes, in a way, yes, it's football, but of course there's lots of tension uh, because uh, Barca has become our, like, our national team, so uh, it's uh, very strong when we lose or we or we win with... Unfortunately, me. several days ago, you yeah. lose yeah, yeah. El Clasico. It was quite hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, 
we have to be in the bad moments and in the good moments. Yeah. So, yeah. Any questions? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. And again, uh, first of all, coming to coming back to the Catalan identity, uh, I know uh, British author uh, Matthew Tree, who lives in Barcelona, and I read his uh, book. Uh, about Catalonia, and uh, uh, he t uh, tells that uh, he has been uh, many times uh, asked about uh, why uh, he didn't accept uh, and obtain Spanish uh, nationality while living in Barcelona for 40 years, and his response was, uh, was that uh, Living in Barcelona, I never felt that I uh, live in Spain. And he explains why, because traditions, language, and uh, attitude of people are completely different than in monolingual sp Spain, as he described. And uh, it's it's very uh, interesting book, and uh, it explains uh, the differences which are huge and that's not uh, just economic but also ethnic and cultural and uh, that's that's very interesting and uh, yeah uh, i would recommend that book and uh, again coming back to internal uh, issues you just uh, tell uh, that uh, there is no room with spanish government to negotiate because they refused but also recently I noticed that they some kind of softened their position regarding the political prisoners and now they can go out and to see their relatives get back. I just checked my uh, social media and uh, see that Junqueras is now out of prison. Uh, but uh, again, is it uh, just uh, how to say is it, isn't it serious? Isn't it uh, give any opportunity to negotiate? Or they just refuse? Because I, I, uh, from legal point of view, I know that these people are political prisoners. Uh, even if they uh, do not t uh, sell, uh, tell that they are hostages. But again, the position is some kind, somehow is softened. Now they are in Catalonia and uh, now they can go out, etc. And uh, isn't it gives room to, to, to talk to them? It's not softened, it's uh, the way it is. So they have been already three years in prison oh. and it's a right as prisoner when you have been three oh. years uh -huh. that you have this right. So they are not doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, and amnesty called them political prisoners. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes. So they are not doing something different because they are another government. It's, it's, it, in reality, has nothing to do. One thing is it's mm -hmm. the judge the, yeah. and, the other, and the other thing is the government. Okay. So. Uh, all prisoners, wherever if you are a politician or not, mm -hmm. after three years of prison, you have the right to go out. So it's it's something okay. in the in the rule of law. So it's 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 not that they are they are being nice to that's, us. It's something that 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 happens as a right. That's not a political uh, will. That just no, what, it's not a political what, will. It's yeah. just that it's it's their right and they are they are asking for it. But I will give an example. So they are the. The, the judges are trying so hard to stop it. And I put the example of Dulos Basa, that, um, um, for example, they, they let Junqueras and Rumeva to go out to work, mm -hmm. but instead they don't, they don't let the Dulos Basa to go and take care of her grandmother that is dying, mm -hmm. like her mother that is dying, mm -hmm. and they have left uh, the, um, uh, a person that uh, was from the popular a woman that was from the popular party that is in prison, they let her go and take care of his son of 29 years old, that he needs lots of things, a son of 29 years old. Mm -hmm. They let him go out to take care of his son of 29 years old, and they don't let Dulos Basa to go out to take care of her mother that is dying. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are trying so hard uh, to to be miserable with the, mm -hmm. with the rights of prisoners. So. Uh, if Junqueras and Romeva they are going out is because it's very difficult to stop in the rule of law yeah, this. Yeah, but they are doing as, as, as they can to, to make yeah. uh, our lives miserable. Yeah. 
uh, Adriana, have you supporters inside Spain and outside of Spain uh, in your bid for independence? I mean, Basques, other nationalities, other parts of Spain. Uh, do they support you or no? Or you are alone in Spain uh, when you are fighting for your independence? We are not alone. We have a lot of people that support us, also in Madrid. We have people, uh, left parties, uh, that support us. They are not the majority parties. They are very, very, very left. So uh, there, there's support, but there's support from the social movement, not from the institutions. So there's a very shy support from the Basque country, but yeah. the institutions, I mean. But of course, the social movements in the Basque country, the independentist movements in the Basque country, they give us totally support. We are brothers. In, in the, we have the same cause. It's like with us, with I, with you, with Armenian, that we are in the same in the same role of play. So we are fighting for the same thing. And, and of course, I would say that in all Europe we have a lot of support. We have seen that since the 1 of October, um, um, me that I am in the international uh, office of, of uh, my organization, uh, we have seen a total change on on the approach of Catalonia uh, because the, the failure of democracy in Spain. So, so I think that a lot of Europeans have opened their eyes and have seen that Spain is not a democracy. And uh, it's very important. We have to arrive to the institutions, but at least uh, this, the, the, the public opinion um, now support us. So, for example, uh, I was now in a meeting of my, of my job in Armenia, an international meeting, and uh, it was more than... 150 um, particip participants of all over the world, and I received support of all of them. So there was not an, any organization that said, oh, but uh, Spain uh, has to defend uh, her, his right and so on. So I had, I had a, a lot of support. Of course, it's in the world of social movements and so, social defense of rights, but uh, I, I think that the, the, since the 1 of October, uh, the, the people of Europe has wake up. Yeah. So, is there any entity, uh, not country, entity in the world who are going to recognize your independence? For example, let's imagine that uh, tomorrow Abkhazia or Nagorno-Karabakh or, I don't know, let us say Kosovo recognizes the independence of Catalonia. Are you, are you, are you, are you working with that kind of entities, non-states? Yes, of course we are. So I would say um, it would be the same case of Nagorno Kamara. So um, I would say that um, we have a lot of friends in the world. We just have to do it. We have to, to be declared independence, go to the unilateral way. We have the majority. We have the vote. So uh, we have just to do it, to have the braveness to do it. And uh, I'm so sure that when we do it, we will receive support from different states that, that had our same tradition and, and have fight for the same as we have fight to have their own countries. So I'm so sure about that. So I think it's important that, um, I, I, I think that the case of Catalonia can help a lot, the case of the conflict of nagorno karabakh here. If, if, we, if we gain something there, it would be positive for you. So it's the same in other countries. If other fights in the world, they gain on the self-determination right, it's, it's good for the Catalans. So we have to be together on this. And that's, that's why when I come to Armenia, I'm so happy that you have invited me because I, I really want to explain what's happening there. And I'm so happy that you want to hear about it. And, and of course, um, our organization has different delegations in over the world. Uh, to try to, to, to advocacy, to, to explain um, to everyone what's happening in Catalonia. Yeah, and I just to like to remind you and our listeners, there's, uh, there's in 19, uh, 1990s, when Armenia uh, became part of the United Nations, at that time only 170 countries, but now uh, 23 more countries joined and 23 more countries uh, became independent. So hopefully one day Catalonia, Nagorno-Karabakh and other nations who are trying to f very hard for their independence, they, they will receive their independence. Other questions? No? 
I'm so sure it's going to happen. Yeah. And a uh, couple of, uh, you know, closing words, please. Well, I would say that uh, thank you for inviting me and... And thank you, AGBU. Thank yes, you. thank you. Thank you, uh, Dalar. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Jordek Janhovic and this institution, of course. Thank you so much for inviting me and, and, and I would say that... Uh, we keep together uh, in contact and we, we, we keep on, on fighting together for the same and we hope we, we win. Yeah. We will win. Even today I can recognize the Catalonian independence and you can recognize the independence of Nagorno-Karabakh. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much. Uh, just uh, closing the event, I would like to say that uh, today uh, we have an opportunity to host here Adriana Isern, board member of the Catalan National Assembly, it's an NGO, and today we're talking on Catalonia and the right to self-determination in the 21st century. Thank you again, Adriana, thank you, AGPU, and my name is Tatul Hakopian, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a reporter with CivilNet. Yeah. Well, in our case, economy doesn't 